about, think about these few items. Um, texture. So if you've got more than four or five different lines going on all the time, it's going to be very hard to do it, and it's going to be very hard to do it in a sort of successful way. So maybe you want to choose something else. Um, if you also have something where it's all about like colors and orchestration or about textures, like if you have to do, um, well, I'm thinking, I heard Stephen Tharp do uh, Daphnis and Chloe by Ravel. It was really amazing, but I don't really think that any of us could do this. And plus, I don't think I would want to have to do something that is that challenging for a Sunday. Yeah. So for me, not the best idea. Or if it has a lot of percussion, like a lot of percussion effects, these are very hard to do on the organ and not very successful. So um, choose something else. Also, keep in mind um, what type of instrument you're playing on. So you said you have this amazing four manual Kimball. Well, that's great. There's so much you can do, right? I mean, I play a very bad two manual Moller, uh, Austin, sorry. It sounds like a Moller, but um, two manual Austin, you know, where there's like dead notes everywhere. And um, my solo read is a 16 foot fagot on this well. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and the bottom part doesn't play. And so, any thought of doing something that would be like very lush and lyrical is pretty much out the window, right? If I want to transcribe something, it has to be a piece where I can use the principle A as my soul and stuff. Um, form structure, if you choose something that just has like a lot of crescendo to crescendo and all this, it's, it's very hard to convey this properly on the organ. So you might just want to do, um, you might want to choose a word for the structure is a little bit clearer. Or at least you can alter it so it's, you know, sort of like a big arch. Think about your typical English organ piece, yeah? It's gonna start soft, soft, it's gonna go loud and low, it's gonna come back soft. Something like that is great because it's very easy to follow. So you don't wanna have to, like, do all the shading all the time. Okay. I think your main priority when you do transcription is it shouldn't take too much of your time. It's great when you have all the time in the world. But if you've got to do like something for Sunday, you really have to make sure that it can be done within a week. So that should always be your first focus. Like, you know, you need to cut things or whatever, like just go for the essential. Um, I always start by my transcriptions by listening to the piece and trying to identify what is important. So find, find a, even like a piano score listen to it and like make a little notes like here we want to hear this, we want to hear this and all that. That that's, is important because that's what your choir or your soloist is going to rely on. It's great if you can incorporate all these other elements, but if we don't hear the tune, um, it's worthless. So listen listen to a recording. If you can, listen to three, four recordings because then different versions might bring out different parts of the piece and that will give you a more rounded idea of what it sounds like. Um, if you're doing something that's an orchestral piece, I would suggest giving an orchestral score. Um, even if eventually you actually transcribe it from the piano score, I think it's better if you see it the way it was written at first, right? Mm -hmm. Just because the piano score is already an arrangement, so you're essentially arranging an arrangement. It's better if you go back to the original um, and then learn it from, from the original. Um, Okay, once you've analyzed the score and you've identified what you will need to keep and what you can cut, then it's a little bit like a puzzle. Okay, so the, the goal is to the goal is to keep as many elements as possible while see, still keeping it manageable and not taking too much of the time. So um, registration, orchestration are not the same thing, obviously. But if you can stay as close as possible to the orchestration, that's great. And I'm, I'm thinking not just in terms of instruments, like you know, an oboe solo, you keep the oboe, but also just in terms of how the chords are voiced and spaced. Very often, the color comes from, say, like the melody be being doubled at the octave and things like that. So the more of that you can keep, the closer to the original it will be. Um, registration is really one thing that can redeem a bad word. We all know very bad composers who are great orchestrator, and we really know a bad organist who are really good at registration. And so your transcription should sound good, like even an eight and four, but obviously use the registration to improve it. Um, rhythm is often as important as harmony or melody, and that's one part I think we forget. 
So if you have any section in the orchestra, say that's, uh, I don't know, let's say you have a work in the, in the wind, 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 wind. Don't just cut the rhythm by thinking, oh well, the horns are doing this. So I'm going to cut this, right, and just play this. Okay, I agree, that's way easier. But probably your choir needs to have that rhythmic pulse, right? Da, 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 da. It will really help that to sing. So don't just like get rid of all the rhythm so you can have the harmony and the melody. Try to keep as much of the original rhythm as well. Uh, church setting, your main focus should be supporting the choir or the soloist. Yeah? So whatever decision you make, try to think like, what will help, what will support them the best? Okay, maybe you could do something that's very cool, but actually it will confuse them, so don't do this. <laughs> um, so always keep in mind that like you're there to help them and support them. You're not there like just to show up or, or um, yeah, to make it sound great. Um, you must be able to perform your transcription at a tempo similar to the original. Okay, so if you make it so hard that, that you can only play it at about half the tempo, it's not gonna work. I swear your choir is gonna kill you if you make them sing and they turn blue because they, they're out of air. Okay, so remember that. And if, if that means you have to cut a lot of things, so be it, as long as they can sing. Um, okay, and, and of course, like, uh, you know, keep in mind, as I said, the instrument you're playing on, and so don't do a transcription that's gonna be for the one maker. Right? If, if all you have is a small two manual with no pistons. Mm -hmm. And it's possible to do very successful transcriptions with no pistons and things like that. You just have to be careful about how you do them. Questions? No? Oh, rhythm is you're doing that repeated before. Yeah. How much can you use pianistic configuration? Because a lot of times it's you know, a solo arrangement mm -hmm. for piano, they throw it on this before they want to play it. It has arpeggios like uh, a lot of Lord and Prayer. Yep. It's all arpeggios. Uh -huh. Do they really work on the organ or other? Mm -hmm. They have just repeated chords from the time. Right. Um, a couple months ago, no, yeah, a couple months ago, I got to church and the soloist was singing The Holy City. And for some reason, they didn't tell me he was saying that. They just sort of <laughs> gave me the music a half an hour before the service and said, rehearse this with him, and then he did it in the service. And the rehearsal was at the piano, and gosh, that thing sounds really great on the piano. But then, of course, I got to the organ, you know, that I didn't even have time to register anything. But, and yeah, a lot of that stuff really doesn't sound that great. Like, so um, there's one section, actually, that's all about piano tricks. So I, I can do it now if you want, or... Okay, but yeah, I agree that... Um, we have to adapt some of that because it's just not the best. I was thinking about the rhythm because it's, it's so tempting to just, it's, it's a bit like people doing transcriptions of Wagner, they look only at the harmony and they forget the melody and they forget the rhythm, and so it all becomes just like huge harmonic blocks moving, but we don't get any momentum. And, and you know as well as I do with your playing hymns or a congregation or something, you have to be so careful that you also like give them some rhythm, right? Doing like this hand, right? You, you wouldn't want to do this, but you also would want to play it like this, right? right? You need to repeat something. So, same type of idea that you need that percussive element of rhythm. Um, let's keep talking about that and then we'll get to the piano. Finalizing your work, okay, so once you've written down, you know, and you've learned the, the whole thing, um, this is when you do the registration, okay, so it's very good to add in your ear an idea of what you want it to sound like in terms of registration, and then just be creative, like don't, don't worry about being out there, but if you need to do a timpani roll, there's so many things that work as a timpani roll, but like any sort of, like sort of motion in the bottom of the pedals. Will, will work great. What, what I would say is like, just be creative, try out things, and if they sound like what you're expecting, well then keep it, even if it's really not what the original was like. Um, at that convention last week, I learned how to do a harp in the organ, I never, never heard of that, but, um, so I guess you're supposed to plug down the two select. Sort of a, a 
attention, so you keep the flu cells and, and then you plug with a, a board on the other end. This was a trick that John Weaver had, but I would have never thought of doing that for a heart. But just that to say that sometimes it's really not in any way related to the original, but if it works, it's good. Um, coordination is always like one of the main problems with transcription units. So again, like use good practice strategies, like count out loud when you're playing, use a metronome, use a metronome. And then try, try recording yourself and listening to it and thinking like, okay, does that sound like the original? Is that what I wanted? And if, if you find there's some problematic passages, then rewrite them. Transcriptions are long because they take more time to mature and all that. So it's good if you don't do them at the very last. So don't do like me and don't wait until like the day before to finish it. Okay, orchestral works. There's two main issues with orchestral scores. First of all, you have so many states to read. Yeah, and second of all, some of these instruments are transposing. Mm -hmm. So um, a, few, a few things to keep in mind, okay? So strings are not quite as bad as woodwinds because they don't transpose. You have to read um, a different clef for the viola, but that's sort of okay, right? It's not too bad, sort of. Um, flutes, oboes, and bassoons don't transpose. So these are great to read uh, because they're always the right key. Most brass instruments, except trombones, transpose, right? Mm -hmm. And often in one section, you're gonna have more than one. So, for example, you might have horns in E flat and F, or you know whatever the combination is. So you don't really want to be stuck reading the brass. If you can avoid it, you don't want to read the horns and the trumpets. Sounds stupid, but unless they have a solo, very often they're not like that. Um, keeping the points above in mind, see whether some of the transposing instruments actually double some of the non-transposing instruments. For example, it's very common to have a melody in the violin that's going to be doubled by the oboe or the clarinet or something like that. If it is, great for you, you don't have to read it. You can just read the strings and forget about the woodwinds. Um, yeah, and, and horns very often, they'll have the solo or they'll be doing some sort of chord configuration in the middle, like thickening the texture. Sometimes they have like that rhythm I was talking about, like that sort of very Tchaikovsky to have that, right? Melody. So if that's the case, just pick up whatever rhythm they do and don't bother reading the notes. Just other instruments are going to be filling the harmonies anyway, so don't worry about that too much. Um, remember that your ear should always be your guide, yes? So um, you can really discard as much as possible as long as it sounds somewhat like the original. Okay, and this is where we get to piano music. So obviously we, we're all in better shape when we have to read the piano score because there's only two states. The problem is that obviously the compass of the piano is larger, so sometimes you end up with those that don't exist, and also, you know, who wants to be doing all those pages and octaves, and plus they don't even sound good, so why would you do this? So, um, you guys all know uh, Dick Elliott from Salt Lake City, from the Mormon Tabernacle, you know the name? Yeah. So they, they do a lot of, uh, they do really a variety of music there. They do everything from you know, classical literature, and then they have this huge choir, so they do a lot of different styles of music. So um, he gave a workshop, and he has some very good ideas, I think, about how to arrange piano music. So I just want to go through them. So octaves often become single notes in both the treble and bass class. Yeah, you don't need to be doubling all of that. We, we've got pitches at different, uh, stops at different registers, in different registers, so we don't need to be doing octaves. So, um, in general, you'll be playing the upper notes of the bass octaves and the lower notes of treble octaves. That makes sense, yeah? Because you're gonna have 16, eight in the paddle, so you don't need to be doubling. And then in the, in the hands, if you play the higher note all the time, it's just very shrill. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can just like keep it down and then add higher pitch. So your hands stay warm together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I drop down to the loft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. sometimes, I think it's a great effect actually. Like I love that color where you have say strings, and you them in octaves, like. Because it can be very nice, but then use a cover. Right? Who, who needs to be like jumping around in octaves when we can just cheat and use couplers? Yeah. Um, bass 
lights, petals do not always have to be used. That's an awesome concept. All of those lines that were written for cello are not always very good to the petals. It's very hard for us to play them. Um, it's very fine to just play everything with your left hand and then accentuate the bigger beats by using the petals like that. I think especially in, say, Handel and things like that, if you have to do Messiah, that's a very good trick. It's, it's going to save you so much time. Um, it's not better. Chords. Thin out the chord texture by putting chords in an open position and getting rid of doublings. Okay, remember that when you're using chord two stops, doublings, curve and smash. Okay, so yeah, that's right. You don't need to be playing this. That's way too big. Yes. 
see where I am? No? Okay, sorry. Yes. Sorry, so the first three musical examples we have are all taken from the same chorus of the sign and it's blurry together. So it's just one page from each version. Okay? Sorry, I should have made that clear. So but the first page, the one that says 69, is the reduction. Yeah, so it's just three different editions. Um, I forgot actually what they are. I think the first one is Novello, and then the other two are like Peter's Sherber, I think. Okay, so you can see that number two and number three, they decided to keep pretty most of the notes that the orchestra was playing, right? The third one is a little bit easier.
sustaining more essentially and the harpsichord is going to be doing all the proportions. Yeah, I'm, pretty, I'm not really sure there's a lot of times it's like you said, yeah. you have a, a score and you don't know what, <laughs> you well, don't for know. me I don't know what kind of orchestra is going to be recruited because sometimes you, know, you might get two strings, six trumpets and a saxophone. You know, right. <laughs> and you're like, okay. But um, when there is a fuller orchestra properly balanced, I'm going to say a hand of the piano is playing, mm -hmm. I'll try to just play the, or the, the vocal parts only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's why, because then that supports them, and, and they feel good, and they feel there's somebody that has their back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, let's put it also frankly, like even yesterday, I don't think the piano and the organ were tuned at all. Okay, so if you really all double what they're doing, it's just going to sound pretty bad. So, yeah. Stay in the middle of the range, too, because it's usually really Anyway, so, so back to this, yeah. So, like if I, if I were a rehearsal accompanist and I saw this, like, I would want to get a different edition than the second one. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we move on to the next example, which actually is from the other video. I figured we all do that. Okay, so we have three examples again. You guys need to hear Gigi the sort of some sort of oral reminder of what this sounds like. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I <laughs> okay, so when I look at especially the second and the third examples, I mean you guys look at all those offerings in the in the bass, and that's what the offerings look like. That just looks like the Sherman transcription mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So I, you know, Sometimes I'm locked up as to what I play and what I don't play. But it's very hard. If you look at things like they have all these octave leaves in octaves and things like that. Even if you play this on the piano, it's very tricky. And I understand they do it because they think you need more support, but. Where did you find this book? I think it's the novello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most of it is pretty good. It's, it's very playable on the organ. You still have to cut a little bit. If 
all the fingers that you repeat, not just two or three of them. Yeah? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This is much harder. It's much easier if I repeat it with me, so this is so much easier than And at that tempo, nobody's going to be able to say that I'm not repeating the D. Well, right? but the, yeah, and this, but this kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's not needed. And I think they, they write it this way because they think it's going to be easier, right, to repeating two notes instead of three. Are you missing the page? I just think that. Oh. <laughs> I just think that. It's to be page number six of the musical example. All right, should I bring back what we have? Quite as famous as the Hallelujah chorus. Oh, I'm sorry, it actually did log me off, so it's going to just take a minute until I find it. Would you guys like to listen to it? <laughs> Can't even smile awkwardly. Yeah. So 
the, the fingers of the organ is, but most organ action is just, yeah, it's like just like that. And uh, that was actually a pretty conservative tempo, right? I've heard that mm -hmm. performance, like, <laughs> much faster speed than that. So that's why it's a little bit tricky, but, um, and also in the pedal, like, you really need to have all of those eight notes to mm -hmm. read that, right? Here in the gamba, it's great, but really not the organ. I think I would probably go for like the quarter note, quarter note pulse in the bass, right? So anyway, as long as you convey this. And then um, the bass is 136, right? This is that great chorus. Um, that doesn't break their bonds. get to do Messiah very often? Do you do just some parts of it? I'm just curious about it. For us, it's more parts. Now, we did actually do, uh, of course, Power of the Chorus gets pulled out in February. Mm -hmm. But uh, we did the Worthies that went out, which was my first time to register and arrange it for the uh -huh. It was a, a bit of a challenge. I won't. <laughs> that feud is tricky at the end. Well, and we did the, the thank you, we did the feud. We went straight from there into uh, the online thing. Well, no, I think we, well, we did the, when did we do the online? We did the feud. So did you do the? Yeah. <laughs> 
And for light strings too, I mean, even mm -hmm. like the double bass, I think it would play that mm -hmm. for gas. So we really have to see that. Um, the next few examples I have come from the St. John Passion. And I figured it would be, we should look into this a little bit, right? It's probably less familiar than the panel. Okay, so the first movement that I have is, um, I have only two examples for each of them, but this is the opening chorus. Okay, and just to give you an idea, you see how many layers you have, right? You have the oboes and the flute on top. Like, a, like 
like a dog to try and get all of those notes. If you, if you guys have ever seen the figures, the figure base for that movement is awesome. I mean, it's all the chords are something like nine, seven, six, four, mm -hmm. or something like that. Like every single one of them. Um, partly because it's a tonic pedal, so it's all very different. Sorry, were you going to say something? No, I just tell you, you guys to see. Yeah, it's, it's very bizarre music, I find. <laughs> And so when the choir comes in, it's essentially the same thing repeated, except that he adds the choir on top of it, so you can just keep pretty much the same texture. Um, but again, like... Hopefully you can put it in the understand it's also a little bit in depth of the choir, it's a little bit required, but if you play it exactly, it's a little bit of a score. And not really knowing that it doesn't work, he just wants all the notes here. Right, but I mean, like, there's who? Yeah, as you said, women don't have hands that are big enough, but like, who can play this? I could never. I mean, even for two hands, that's awesome. I mean, isn't that awesome? I mean, look, look at those scratches. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Like, every hand is completely like a 10, 30, 11. I, I think, as you said, I don't think they reduced it. I think they just put down everything that was in the orchestra for and let the four pianos and organists do it. <laughs> Okay, so don't do this. Um, second set of examples we have from the Passion is um, Chorus 21B, so I get a two step. Okay, and then we have an example of like the very bad one. So the, the bad one is the second one. Do you guys want to hear this maybe? So we're going to have to, we're going to have to find this. Um, okay. Yeah, it's pretty B.
let's listen to it a little bit, but you're, you're, you're going to hear what it sounds like, and really, we don't need all of that. My rule of thumb uh, would be just keep it simple. Just figure out really what is essential. Stick to this, and then the rest of it anyway. Um, people are not doing it. Are all of these simple ones in the um, No, for the Bach it was Carus, uh, Carus, C A R U S, and the handle was Novella. I think it was designed with the your sort of typical. British organist in mind who has to do the Messiah every year. Maybe from a, a, an older time when they did oratorios every day. <laughs> so I think they're done a little, they're a bit more practical. Um, and I know like people like John Rutter actually have been doing transcriptions. Mm -hmm. And most of them are very good. They're just very playable. And they're really for organ. It's not organ or piano. It's really specific. Do you guys have to do like more piano stuff on the organ or does it vary or? Our instruments are usually, yeah, there's usually piano. Mm -hmm. um, we have a small orchestra, so um, either enhancing, filling in the orchestra with on strings. Mm -hmm. We actually have a, a four manual Lee Rogers mm -hmm. that's uh, also got the MIDI mm -hmm. module, so I actually have really those real proof strings. And oh, okay, so you can know, actually so use that, yeah. Do, uh, interesting, the whole new dimension to <laughs> registration, all of a sudden. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, yeah. and so it's like having really to want to make solo strings are gorgeous, you know, the right. violins and cello, it's a, it's a real cello, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can you can even like try it out and see people at the church know this. Yeah. Yeah. Which one is the right one and which one oh. is <laughs> I think one thing at the organ is overrated is harmonic support. It sounds bizarre to say, but very often the melody will outline the chords in a way you don't need to fill it up by having very thick texture. 